last class period as well as I believe the class periods before that kind of talked about the area here is um, if we're dealing with the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And again, if we're talking about the area, and we know that um, if we have different areas as far as like negative and positive, we could break up from a to b, we could break up that area with c. So we could break this up from a to c of f of x dx plus c to b f of x dx. And again, could you know look something like this? I don't know. You know, if here's A, here's B, and here's C. So basically, rather than integrating from A to B, again, what we could do is we could integrate from A to C and then from C to B. And usually this is a lot of times helpful when we're looking at something like, you know, a negative area and so on and so forth. And we don't want, and we want to find like the total area, we know that we could add, you know, those two up. Or just in general, even if we're looking at graph, we know that the area from here plus the area of there is equal to the integral from A to B, right? But C is like our connector. So it's really important that we kind of notice this pattern here. A to C, C to B. So if we can create that connection, we can find our integral. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to go from negative 6 to 3. So somehow, what I got to do is with the information given, I got to connect negative 6 to 3. But obviously, I don't have anything that connects negative 6 to 3, right? So I got to kind of create that connection based on the information I have. So let's see what we can do. So I need to start from negative 6. I'm going to go to 3. Now, um, if I look at this, I can go to 3. Well, all right, cool. Then I could go from, then if I, let's say I go from negative 6 to 3. So that's cool. Well, that means I could kind of start from, um, I could replace this, like let's say, all right, so anyways, this has to equal, we got to set this equal to a representation. So maybe let's try it this way. Let's start at 4. 4 goes to negative 6. Then the next one would have to go down to is negative 6, right? There's nothing like negative 6s here. Hmm, OK. Um, what about if I went from like 3, 3 to 7? Then I need to go down to 7 down here. Well, there's nothing down to 7. But again, we talked about we could also take the integrals and like flip them around, right? Manipulate them however we want to. As long as we go in the opposite direction, it just means the integrand is negative, right? So here, actually, let's, let's clean this up first of all. Um, let's go and get that 1 half out of the way. So let's do from 3 to negative 6. Let's put a 1 half out there, f of x. And then let's subtract. 3 to negative 6 of 3. All right, first let's clean, kind of clean this up. OK, so now let's try to see if we can follow, follow this. If I go from negative 6 to 3, that means the next integral, if I wanted to break this up, I would have to go from 3 to some other value. Well, the only thing I have is 7. So I can go to 3 to 7. So let's actually, let me write this out. So I could do, so if we go from negative 6 to 3, that's what we're trying to figure out. So we want to kind of like rewrite this. Um, well, actually, that's going to be kind of uh, interesting here. That's going to be tough. So let's see here. I need to replace this with something. Why don't I try this? Why don't I flip this around? So therefore, I'm left with 4 to negative 6 of f of x. So all I'm doing is I'm taking this one and I'm flipping this around. Negative 6 to 4. Now, that means I need to add this to something that's going to start with 4. Would you guys agree? Or I need to go down. It needs to, so if I'm going to go from negative 6 to 4, which is this one, just flipped over, that means I need to make the connection. I need to go from 4. So do I have anything that goes from 4? Yeah, I have this one, right? I can go 4 to 7. All right, that's good. 4 to 7 f of x. Because again, I have the value of that. Well, if I'm going to do that, that means this one has to start with a 7. And I have to have it end at 3. So do I have one that goes from 7 to 3? 
No, I don't have one that goes from 7 to 3, but I could easily flip it, and then we're good. And then minus, um, now this one we could, uh, let's, that be a yes, it is. Sorry, thank you. Well, we haven't done it yet. I haven't, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to get to all those because we flipped this one too as well. Um, and let's just leave it like that 3 to negative 6, 3dx. All right, but does everybody see how I did this though? No. Do you see? From negative 6 to 4, connects from 4 to 7, which connects from 7 to 3. It's the same thing. I'm, I'm starting at negative 6, and I'm ending at 3, which is exactly what I wanted. We don't have anything from negative 6 to 3, though. Okay. None of these go from negative 6 to 3. But if I patch these together, it takes me to where I want to go. Okay, So that's what it's saying. You can take an integral and break it up. right? You could also take the parts and bring them together. But you got to start and end so at your end again. Yeah, okay. exactly. All I did was I took this and I expanded it out to its parts based on this information. But when you flip the integral like that, or it's going to be negative, which we haven't gotten to that yet. Okay. Why did you pull one half out instead of two? I did pull out a two. It's a two in the denominator, though. So to make that one, you pulled out two. No, I. This is. Half of x divided by 2 is 1 half f of x. Same thing. All right. All right, so now let's go and get to the values. So I have from negative 6 to 4, which I do not, which I have, but I have it flipped. So if that's negative 3, then this one is now going to be, and I'm just going to write it all out long term just so you guys can see I'm negating it. Plus uh, 4 to 7, we have that, so that's going to be plus 5. And then from 7 to 3, that's the same thing. So that's going to be the opposite of 9. Now, could we integrate this by using, like, could we like integrate this and then evaluate it? We could. Or could we also just figure out what the length and width is of this rectangle? Because we know that's really going to just give us a rectangle, right? We kind of already did these. Remember I showed you guys, like, hey, y equals 3. 1, 2, 3, right? You're at y equals 3. And then we're going from negative 6 to? 3. So guys, what's the length and the width? 9 times 3, right? So we could just, it's kind of easier in my mind to just multiply 9 times 3 than actually integrating and doing all that math. Yep. Can we just go ahead and put the negatives? You can. Yeah, I'm just doing it one way just to kind of slow it down for instructional purposes. So now let's just go and simplify this up. So I have 5 minus 9 is negative 4. Um, plus 3 is going to give me 1. So I have 1 half times 1, and then minus 27. And if I'm making any mistakes, please make sure you let me know before I'm done. Um, that's a 1 half. So it looks like I have, um, let me erase this. That's a positive. That's a, yeah, it is a negative 1. Thank you. So therefore, that's a negative 1 half minus 27, which is the same thing as a negative 54, no, uh, negative 1 half minus 54 over 2. So that's going to be a negative 55 over 2 would be your answer. Yeah, you owe me a dollar. You borrow $54. You owe me $55. Common denominator multiplied by 2 over 2. We good? Huh? Yes? Or I didn't know if you said yes or lost. 